Hey guys, it's been a while since I've posted a video. I've been a little busy. I moved from Utah to Texas and then I got married. Um, I've been wanting to post this video for a while, so I'm going to be testing an i9-12900K. I, I want to see what happens when you air cool it with a basic Intel cooler. This isn't the cooler that it, it came with. It doesn't come with a cooler. It comes with a, I have a, an i3-12100F. You're definitely not supposed to use it with a 12900K, but I kind of want to just say F it and try it. So I'm going to test temps. I want to see what kind of performance I get while gaming or running uh, stress tests. And I just want to see what the heck happens. Let's do it. So first things first, I put the cooler in. It doesn't look that bad compared to Intel stock coolers in the past. Um, they made this one black, it used to be just silver. So it's not that bad looking for just a basic stock cooler that comes free with the processor. Now that I got that in there, I'm going to pair it with the GPU. I'm not going to do anything too crazy. Just uh, your basic Founders Edition 3080, so nothing too crazy. So I'll go ahead and throw that in there. That should pair nicely with the 12900K. It, it shouldn't bottleneck it. Why would we want to bottleneck a 12900K that's air-cooled, you know? That would just be silly. Okie dokie, plug that bad boy in. I pre-installed everything except the air cooler and the GPU. Let's see if this bad boy boots. And like I said, this is just, it's all air-cooled. I'm gonna just see what happens when I try to do a completely air-cooled system with the 12900K with, with the basic stock Intel cooler. Okay, we we got some RGBs. What's weird to me is that the GPU is not lighting up. Ooh, what the flip? It should boot now. My I don't know how, but the CPU cable was slightly unplugged and it just restarted. But it should still boot. There we go. <laughs> so unfortunately, my hard drive doesn't want to boot. I had Windows installed and all my programs I needed, so now probably corrupted so I'm gonna have to reinstall Windows so bear with me <sighs> stupid corruption so I got everything installed finally right now my idle temp you're looking at about 35 degrees Celsius I've seen better temps with the liquid cooler but it's not bad I'm gonna be using user benchmark I'm gonna read you the score I should be getting and I'm gonna actually run the user benchmark test and I want to see if that's the actual score that I get I want to see what kind of effect the cooler has if I actually score what I'm supposed to score. I haven't done the benchmark yet. This is what I should be scoring. Well, actually, you know what? F it, I'm just gonna do it right now. And we'll, and then we'll compare it. Oh yeah. All right, this was a short test, so it didn't really put a lot of load on the processor. It just very briefly touched the processor. So it peaked at 91 degrees Celsius, which isn't the max temp that that processor can hit. All right, these are the results, so I'm comparing what I actually got to what I was supposed to get. So you're looking at 229, what I should have scored in, as far as the gaming score goes. I did 254, so a lot better. I should have scored 113 on desktop. I scored 119, a little better. Workstation, I should have scored 278 and I scored 305 on Workstation. So that short test says that I should be getting these scores, but this is a short test. It doesn't really account for any thermal throttle. Um, I guess the test isn't long enough to really see the effects of thermal throttle, but those are what the scores gave me. I just wanted to see if an air cooler had an effect on this test, but it doesn't look like it. That was a little anticlimactic. Well, we got that over with. Next, I'm gonna do a Cinebench test. I wanna see what we score. I wanna see what our max temp was. I wanna see if there's any thermal throttle, and let's just see what happens. If I'm going by core temp, I can tell I'm definitely thermal throttling. I can see how much power is actually going into the processor 130 watts. That's nowhere near the max. I am at 100% load. It only took like 30 seconds for me to see that it started with thermal throttle. All right, so my Cinebench score was 20,764. Last time I did my, the Cinebench test on the 12900K, I got a much different score. I was liquid cooling it, but it was with a single fan liquid cooler. It wasn't even the optimal setup, but I, Last time I got 26,326. That sounds like some thermal throttle. So now I'm gonna do 3D mark. The benchmark I like to do is Fire Strike Extreme. I'll tell you what it scores, I'll tell you what the max temp was. Now, Fire Strike Extreme is a very GPU dependent test. Now it still does your CPU, so we'll see how that little fan affects the, the score. 
Yeah, so according to core temp during the 3D Mark Fire Strike Extreme test, I did hit 100 degrees. Oh, flip, man. <laughs> so it, it's hard It's hard to compare to what I had last time because I forgot I was using a 3070. Flip me, man. You know what we're gonna have to do? I'm gonna have to throw the water cooler in there. I'm gonna have to see what a water cooled 12900K, uh, an air cooled. So I'll run all the tests with the air cooler and then I'll run all the tests with the liquid cooler so that we can get a better score. But yeah, for the air cooler, the score I got was 19,805. Max temp was a, was 100 degrees Celsius, so I was thermal throttling. So I'm gonna do Furmark. That is probably my least favorite test, but I like stressing the CPU. There's gonna be for sure thermal throttle. The only time I've ever seen a computer not thermal throttle during the Furmark test is when I was using this coarse air cooler, that triple fan radiator. I doubt this is gonna be anywhere close to what this is. So let's let's just do it. F it. Yeah, already hit a, already hit 100 degrees, and it's only been like 30 seconds. Ooh, yep, it's feeling warm. I'm at 133 watts. I mean, it's just gonna continue to do that. Lower the, the amount of power it uses so that it doesn't get past 100 degrees Celsius. I'm at 120 watts of power, so I'm not, being, I'm not able to utilize the full potential of that processor because of the cooler. And I know it's not the, the cooler that we're supposed to be using, so makes sense. After about 10 minutes of running it, uh, you're looking at, what, 120, 127 watts. So that's a lot of thermal throttle, so. That's expected. It's, it's a cheap cooler. Last thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna game on it. I wanna see what the max temp is. I wanna see if it can at least handle gaming. I wanna see if, it, if I can even notice the effects, what I think is gonna happen. Probably not. I, I don't think I'll be able to, well, I'm gonna be playing Grand Theft Auto, so. It does actually use the, the CPU a lot. It, my eyes may not be able to see it, but let's see. I've been gaming for a couple of minutes. I've already hit 100 degrees. My, f my FPS says it's at 144. But I'm gonna try to get some explosions. I want to see if my FPS drops because of the heat. I mean, that's I know it's the graphics card that deals with a lot of the FPS, but I want to see if the CPU starts to bottleneck it. Let's get some explosions. Okay, I am reaching the max temp for my CPU, 100 degrees. So that right there, I would already not <laughs> recommend gaming with uh, the stock cooler because over time that can damage your that can damage your CPU and it'll probably lead to failure a lot quicker than it should. But so far, because I'm, I'm only, it says I'm only using, the most I've seen is 20% of the CPU and I'm at 100 degrees. I'm at 118 watts of power, 116. So, but my FPS is stayed up because my FPS is staying at 144, so we're good, but it's looking like uh, the CPU is uh, heating up real good. I did put cheat codes in so that everything explodes because I want to try to, I want to make the graphics card and the CPU work. But yeah, I've already hit the max temp. Yeah, but my FPS is not really affected, which is, Cool, but still, I don't recommend it because if you're letting your processor hover at in the 90s to 100s, I mean, you're just gonna ruin your processor over time. So yeah, max temp, almost like the first seven cores hit 100 degrees, so definitely not ideal. That was like a nine-year-old game and the processor was cooking. Just so I can compare it, I'm just gonna throw this in and I wanna see how it compares to a air cooler versus a dual fan radiator. Now I gotta take it apart. Let's do it. I had to split the video in a couple parts just because I got busy. But I do have the liquid cooler in there. So it's the NZXT, what the flu is it? So I have the NZXT Kraken X53 in there. It's just a dual fan radiator. It should be a lot better than this air cooler, the Intel air cooler. I'm gonna run the same benchmarks that I was running for the, the air cooler. I wanna compare the scores, I wanna compare temps. I wanna see how much of an improvement I'm actually getting. All right, so I'm gonna start with Cinebench. Let's do it. Uh. So the Cinebench score that I got when I was air cooling it was 20,764 with a max temp of 100 degrees Celsius. Now, when I liquid cool it, my max temp was 
26,558. My max temp was still 100 degrees, but I didn't hit it nearly as quick and I scored way better. So I was able to get better performance out of the, the i9. And even though I had 100 degrees Celsius, with the liquid cooler, I was using about 200 watts of power consistently throughout the, the Cinebench test, which means I was able to utilize what the i9 can actually do when it comes to performance. That goes right to show right there. Don't air cool it. All right, so next we're gonna do the Firestrike Extreme test just like we did with the air cooler. So let's do it. This is Sir Klaus, he's bigger now. Still a curious kitty. He's helping me with the uh, with the benchmarks as well. But anyways, so I ran the fire strike test. The scores are actually really similar. Now it is a GPU heavy test. So I'm testing the same GPU. So on the air cooler, my score was 19,805. With the liquid cooler, my score was 19,828. But the big difference I saw was the max temp. So with the air cooler, my max temp was 100 degrees Celsius. On the liquid cooler, my max temp was 71 degrees Celsius. So that's almost 30 degrees difference. Even though the scores were pretty similar, your processor is gonna last a lot longer if it's only gonna be hitting 70 degrees. So that's those scores. And another thing, I was trying to do the user benchmark test, but it's not detecting my GPU. I already reseeded my GPU, I already uninstalled the drivers, reinstalled drivers. Um, I re-downloaded the user benchmark test and it keeps, when I'm doing the test, it'll say 3080 in the corner, that it's benchmarked in my 3080. But whenever I get my results back, it just says that no GPU detected. So I don't know what's going on because everything else is detecting the GPU. So I'm not like, I'm not sure. But it's fine because that test is really short. It doesn't It's kind of GPU heavy anyway. And it doesn't really heat, the processor doesn't really heat up in it. So it's fine. I just, I'll skip that one for now and I'll try to figure out later why it's not reading my graphics card when I run that user benchmark test. Anyways, all right, so the last test is I'm gonna game. I'm gonna game for 15 minutes. I wanna see, see what my max temp was while gaming. I'll game for about 15 minutes. So let's do it. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. And 1440p, 144 frames per second right now. So no throttle right now. I'm gonna try to get some explosions, try to generate some heat. Now I know it's GPU'd. It's very GPU heavy, this game, but if I can get a lot of the map to show, if I can get a lot of the distance to show, I can probably get the CPU to, to work a little harder. Let's see, 50 degrees, not bad right now. This mic last. Um, like I said, I was just trying to get the GPU and the CPU to work harder. What the fudge? Am I falling? Okay, I lost. I'm just gliding now. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, just pass the fence, pass the fence. You mother flipper. That's so stupid. Okay. Oh, are those rabbits? Stupid rabbits. My time's about up as far as gaming goes. The highest I ever saw it get to was about 60 degrees Celsius. The processor. I've actually been here. This is uh, the Griffith Observatory. Let's go, let's go take a look out of the telescope. Let's see. Sick. This is so sick. Look at that. Holy crap. This is probably better than actually being there. Let's see, let's see the view of downtown. Oh yeah. That's awesome. Just, just awesome. According to core temp, I said my max temp was 71 degrees Celsius. During the game on the on-screen temp, the max temp I saw was 60. Probably not telling me all. It's just telling me the, probably the average temperature. This is showing me each individual core. So 71 was the max. That's what I've been going by, if any of the cores are hitting the max. So, and I didn't really see my FPS drop. It was uh, 1440p, 144 frames per second the whole time. So what, what did we learn here? Although the Intel stock cooler has improved as far as looks, don't cool your i9-12900K with it. It's, uh, I wouldn't even say, like your computer will turn on, it'll function, but your processor's probably gonna fail within a year because it heats up pretty quick. Um, you don't even get the performance of an i9 because it's throttling really bad. The dual water cooler probably isn't, it still isn't the best. You probably want a triple fan uh, water cooler. 
to properly cool that bad boy. Didn't burn the house down again. That's good, you know? So now you know. Intel stock cooler, no way no. Actually, oh, I'll see how it cools the i3. Maybe that's what I'll do next. I mean, that's, that's what it came with the i3. Sorry I had to do the video in multiple parts. It just got busy and hopefully in my next video I can do it all in one go. But yeah, that's, that's, that's the air cool i9 12900K versus a dual fan radiator, a dual fan water cooler. Yeah, with a 3080 in it. Nothing crazy. And some Royal Ram. Didn't want to look too fancy.